Okay, welcome. It is actually um, 10.34. We've, um, we have a board member that's trying to call in, Mrs. Patrika, but there's an issue with, with the phone, and um, I was kind of waiting to see. Dr. Savage has also been delayed, but we're going to go ahead and, uh, and, and get started. Um, it is 10.34. 34, as I said, probably 10.35 now, and uh, this is a school board briefing meeting, and we are going to start with an overview of legislative priorities, and we have a Ms. Carol Green and Ms. Ashley Stasel, our legislative consultants from Capital Strategies, that are going to um, brief us. So, ladies... Welcome. Um, I think yeah. probably that's where they set you up. They've locked. Out. They've locked you out. Sorry. It's okay. It's not a problem. I have a little handicap. Both hands. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you. I know you've had an opportunity to um, see the document. I know that it's been sent out to everyone as, as a draft. Um, and we are really here today to listen to you and to give you advice as far as any questions or concerns that you might have in regards to the draft that you have in front of you. The goal being that we get things put in place as quickly as possible. Um, August 6th is the deadline to get everything uh, over to the uh, Lee delegation for their meeting. And then we've already, I've already uh, emailed uh, Representative Roach's office to tell them that we will be doing a presentation uh, at that meeting, so we will be on the agenda for the August 18th meeting. But we'd like to uh, get everything put together so that we can start on our journey of uh, helping to educate our local uh, delegation members as to um, our priorities as we go forward. So everything that you have in front of you is strictly draft. It's strictly being able to look at that. This has been compiled um, by uh, Ms. Stilwell uh, with your input, with our input, your input, everybody's input that cared to input. So uh, I know that she's on her way. Uh, she just texted a few minutes ago. I know she had a little delay this morning, but she's on her way too. But we should go ahead and get started. And Madam Chairman, I'm not sure how you would like to proceed. Well, I think I'm going to um, start by, did you have anything that you wanted to say? Or what, what is your preference? Well, just I, answering questions. We really, yeah, we really are here to answer questions and to hear what you have to say what and, and what are. your priorities are. And, and then we'll give advice as we can and we go through that. I can tell you just off the, off the top of my head that a lot of things that you see, and, and I know I think Ms. Gittins brought that up too, a lot of things that you see are things that you're going to see in a repetitive nature mm -hmm. because they come up every year. So we want to make sure that there's clear direction on that. Well, let's, um, let's just go one by one. We'll start with uh, career and technical education, and I will open it to the board and see if anybody has questions or comments on this priority. Anybody? I have a comment. Before. All right. And yeah. Go, that, we don't have any questions right now. Yeah, but yeah you go ahead. You screen, go ahead. I, I, go ahead and, and um, I've dominated. You go. You give your comments. Well, when Ms. Carol Stasel. and Ms. Jordan and I met with Senator Pasadomo, this was an issue that she specifically brought up and is very interested in and I think has a good chance of getting some funding or some legislation done. So in my opinion, this definitely needs to stay on the priority list. Since our incoming, since our senator and incoming Senate president, which will be, be soon, since it's a priority to her, I think we need to keep it on the priority list. Yeah, and I think from previous board conversations that it's um, 
pretty high on our list too. Uh, Ms. Jordan. No, I was going to say the same thing that, um, that Ashley had stated as well. And she is not the only uh, legislator that um, has Spencer. big beliefs on um, making this happen this year. So because of the um, making sure that every child, regardless if they're um, if they want to go to college, that's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. But if they feel that they rather have a career, we want to make sure that we have that opportunity. And keeping this in here um, as a priority is, is one of those ways of us doing that. Okay. Anybody else from the board have a comment, question? Ms. Fisher. So I just want to say that I think it needs to stay on the list also, especially in, in uh, consideration of the community's response and the workforce needs that we have people uh, coming out of our tech colleges who are immediately uh, taken up and they're earning salaries that are formidable. And I think that um, we have gotten the message from the community that they really support the enhancement of our career and technical education. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Innovation School. This one may bring more discussion. We'll start with board comments, questions, and then you can respond. Okay, sure. Ms. Morgan. Yeah, so actually, um, my, my comment really is in reference to this, the CTE um, uh, proposal also. Do we need to mention the district financial contribution to this school as well as the value of the staff contribution that comes out of FGCU? You mentioned in Career in Tech that this is, this is, you know, the investment they're making is in addition to the investment that the district has made. And I'm just wondering if something becomes more palatable because the ask is on top of a significant commitment being made by the school district and FGCU. So that would be my only comment on that. Um, I think both, both have been written well and I think both are good local priorities. Mm -hmm. Okay, other comments? Yes, Ms. Kittens. Yeah, I, you didn't see my hand about the last one. I just wanted to. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> that's okay. On the career and technical. And uh, help me understand, is this only for the CAPE or is this, uh, uh, is there nothing that's going to affect any of the technical colleges anywhere else throughout the district? And I, I'm sorry. Is, is we, this? Was, we're looking at the we're looking at dollars here, and we're trying. Okay. Oh, that's I, okay. I apologize. No, no, no. That's okay. I was just saying on the career and technical one, is it only for the okay. Cape? Uh, that this has been what was given to us from staff. So we do that at the direction of staff as to where that money is going. That was not our recommendation. So they would be better to address that than than we would be. We're we're really talking more about the overall picture of the career, you know, for the CTE. Where, and it, goes, where it goes is a staff decision, not ours. Right. And that, that's why I was confused, because it says the CAPE. Uh, yes. And I thought that we were talking more global on CTE, because it is a, a major issue in education. So I, I don't want to say yes to something that limits us to only one particular area. And, and if I'm wrong with this, please correct me. Okay. And staff's recommendation was at this point to ask just for the legislative priority for this initiative for the CAPE because it's very specific. We know exactly how much money we need for it and we know what's, what it's going to. And to Ms. Morgan's point, it's very focused. Um, and um, we think that we can get the support for that. Asking for money for a new technical college in the East Zone when we don't fully know where that's going to go or what we're going to have there or plans. Um, when we talked it over with Carol and Ashley, that was kind of esoteric. So the idea would be potentially to have a one sheet about what we want to do out there with the new technical college to let everybody know that we're working towards that so that when we do come to them for the ask in the future, they'll already be briefed on the fact that we're working on it. But in this situation that we have a specific plan and proposal in place for dollars and, and where those dollars would go. Um, and Carol and Ashley, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is, is that the, when they look at this for funding, they want very specific of how much, where it's going, who it's going to support, why you're doing it, that we have to have all of those details in place. Otherwise, it, it's right. less likely to get funding. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You can't put out there, we need this much money and we'll do good things with it. 
No, no, and I understand that. And I didn't bring it up specifically about the East Zone, even though that's the the way it was taken. I'm just thinking overall, if we're talking about legislative initiatives uh, regarding CTE and career tech overall, um, I and I think that um, we've had discussions about moving forward with our career and technical uh, initiatives in the district and how important it is to move forward with that. So I just, the only thing is just making it so narrow. It, it, and if, if it's just that we're asking for this one particular project to be funded, um, I don't know, is there anything else? We that, can expand that on that in a general sense. So we're including the whole district. I'm not talking about the $1.5 million request, but I'm saying we can add a paragraph in there. The verbiage that about verbiage the importance. that will yes. broaden. Yes, we can yes. work on that. that I mean, That's that would be my ask. And, and like I said, I'm not being selfish and just saying one particular area, but I just think that if we expanded district wide, how important CTE is to us as a whole at this point, that it would help to kind of broaden our um, our scope. And I only brought up the the new technical college out there because that was really like the focus of the discussion that we had as staff. So it wasn't you. It was just to share that information that we had had no, that no, discussion I'm, just I'm, in general, but focused. Right. In I on just that. wanted everyone to know. I'm not. I'm thinking overall I get it. <laughs> as opposed to. Specific. I didn't want you to think that I was saying that you were. So okay. yeah, that's an easy fix. Yep. Uh, okay, and I think we'll I would appreciate it. Oh, sorry, and send it out. I would appreciate it. Okay, Thank I you. think Ms. Fisher has a comment. Yes. So when we had our presentation by the CTE people, I think they indicated that this specific request for the expansion at the Cape Coral campus uh, is necessary because it's been underutilized and there's a high demand from the business community, and also the plan that exists. Uh, promises to also be revenue generating. So in addition to the money that we already have allocated, which it says here is 13 million, over 13 million, a million and a half to do that expansion would not only benefit the West Zone, but the whole entire um, district. Okay, so let's go back to innovation. Oh, did just, you have one other one thing? Moment. Yeah. I just want to clarify, so I, I completely understand. I, I know that we need to add CT verbiage throughout the entire district, that's easy. But we are not going to put in a, a request this year for 1.5 million. This is just an educational piece, or are we putting in a request for 1.5 million? I don't that's know. That's two very different things. Yes. Yeah, this is going to be so an we LBR. Need to clarify yeah, this. is this an LBR? All right, so let's, let's, let's. Wait till Savage comes. Yeah, that, that's a big, yeah, he, big difference. And, the two. and from what I understand, I just talked with Ms. Schaefer that he had an emergency and um, he'll be here as soon as he can get, he can get here. Um, why don't we come back to that, wait till the superintendent uh, gets here and um, go through the others because uh, we have quite a full um, agenda. Is this still on um, CT? CTE? No, ma'am, it's not. Oh, we're in innovation? Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> I was hoping. All right, so Ms. Gittens has a question or comment on the innovation school. Okay, my question is we have, and this may mean the superintendent needs to be here as well, because we had talked about the innovation school and the, um, you know, asking for that, uh, I forget what it was called. Uh, some funding that would come through, is, is that what this is addressing, the funding? Because my main question is, in that discussion about the funding that um, we could get from Tallahassee, that it may have to come through higher education, in other words, through FGCU, submitting, you, you understand where I'm coming from, yep. Yep. and them submitting it. Mm -hmm. I would feel more comfortable, and not I individually, but we've also talked a lot about the partnership with FGCU, and this is a big ticket mm -hmm. item, and 
I have asked from day one, when we say partnership, I'm looking for how much are you putting on the table. Mm -hmm. And if that means that FGCU can apply to Tallahassee for this extra grant because it comes through higher education, then will they do that and not have it on us to have to apply for that? So well, I hope it, you understand where. I know that Ms. Stillwell probably has an update too, but because there was a meeting uh, just recent, like late, 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 late last week, uh, between FGCU and and I know she was in the meeting. I believe Dr. Savage was in the meeting, and then I was briefed after the meeting both by FGCU and by Ms. Stillwell. FGCU's um, uh, lobbyist, government relations person, reached out to me too to make sure that that we I think that we all need to understand where we're at. Where we're at is that we're still in planning stages, and this is not in my opinion, far enough along for us to be going up and asking for a lot of money. I also know that FGCU is probably in a situation, not probably, they are, they're in a situation where they have other long range plans that they are currently involved in which creates their need for monies for their particular projects. So for them to be supportive of ours is fine, but for them to try and put in too large sums of money for them and for this, and, and then, there, then you get into the other whole situation about uh, about who owns the land and who owns the property and who owns the the building and who so there's a lot of there's a lot of loopholes there that we need to to tighten up or jump through you know so are you saying with that statement that this particular ask where I, I'm confused no, on where this ask comes in in conjunction with what I think this ask comes into the point of being something that we are very, very interested in, something that we are moving forward on, something that we are going to be doing in the future. It is not something that we are going to start advocating for money this, this particular session. It's something that we need to build on. It's in the priorities because it is something that we believe is a priority of the school district and of FGCU. It's just not into a position yet where they have architectural plans and have everything in place to be able to ask for money. So this dollar amount that's on here really is kind of premature it's, for this legislative yeah, agenda. Yeah, that's, that's correct. All I need. It's, it's an educational piece, piece. Yeah, information, okay. foundation piece. We're Thank not you. asking am for I, twelve million. Am I correct there, Ms. Yes. Stillwell? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I think that the recommendation would be because again, these priorities are all things that came to me from board members, from staff for discussion as to what we want to move forward and what we don't. And so after the meeting that we had with FGCU, I think we were talking about having not moving forward with this specific priority because as you said, Ms. Gittins, the dollar amount was premature, but to have again something like we did with the pre-K a couple of years ago where we had an informational sheet of here's how we're working together, here's everything that we're doing, we want to let you know that this is what we're working on so when we do come for that ask, when we do have those final dollar amounts, you as a, a legislative team will be ready um, because you'll have information and you'll know what it is we're so doing. It's basically an awareness so they know where Correct. we're Correct, so, yeah. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. Okay, other comments, questions on, on this? Um, I, I, have, I have a comment and, and frankly a lot of my opinion echoes what um, Mrs. Jordan, or I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Skittens just said. Um, this, I mean, let me ask you this. If we have more things on here, a lot of things, is this going to, um, let's say, instill the idea that oh, look at everything Lee County is asking, or is it going to be merely, I mean, how, how do they know in, in Tallahassee that this isn't something that we want right now? Because I don't see this. This, this whole thing opens with, we want $12 million, and, and that just kind of hits you in the face. Well, I, 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 and I would refer to Ms. Stilwell. However, I would tell you that that it's not seen that way if it's actually handled the way that, that she's suggesting. And she, I think she's absolutely on target. What she's suggesting, or what I'm hearing, is that we do that one page educational piece 
on it, and that's how it will be handled as an educational piece. It's not going, we're not asking for that. Anything that we're asking for, we jump through an additional hoop, and that additional hoop would be actually filling out a legislative budget request. And when we do that, then that's the thing that they're going to hone in on. This is more a projection, and it's something to set there as a foundation. It is not an ask. It is an educational piece, and we'll be handling it as such. Okay, so when you say it's not an ask, um, it sure looks like an ask. What is, what is um, the so, educational piece? In other words, it wouldn't look like this, what we submit. Correct. What Can would that explain, piece, that's, that's. Explain this, how this is set up because. It, well, yeah, this then, is. So that way you understand it. Yeah, well that's, yeah, yeah, excuse me. That's Sorry what I'm trying. So when we go yeah. through the process of advocating for the school district, this is just one piece of the puzzle. Okay, so we have these pagers. They all have one piece of paper behind them and we discuss these issues and these are also for you. So when you talk to legislators, you have this too. Right. We, mm -hmm. we do not go up there and say, we want $1.5 million here, it's on a piece of paper because that's actually not how that works. Right. We have to go through a process and with the Senate and the House where we fill out paperwork we have to get a sponsor. We have to get these items agenda. They have to pass a committee. They have to pass another committee, and then they have to get put in the bill. So when we go up there, we're just simply saying, these are the priorities for Lee County. If we have an LBR, a legislative budget request, that's a whole separate thing. Like we have to go through a legislative process to get that done. So they're not gonna look at this and say, oh, Lee County, they want 1.5 million, 12 million, 17 million. They're not gonna do that. Because okay. This is just an educational piece, and they would know if we were asking for a lot of money because we would have LBRs in place. And I believe what will happen after today, just to, to add on to that, is that what you've picked up on where it says yeah, request, we can get that, word that. Is got, that word will that's go away. Okay, and that's what I was picking at because yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, in the very off. first line, it just hits you in the face. Mm -hmm. And I personally, before this is turned in as a legislative priority, I would like to see it as an educational piece. And we, as a board and as a district, I feel like we have an additional piece where we need to, I am not personally, as one board member, unhappy with the, and again, air quotes, partnership that we have with FGCU because uh, I haven't seen it as a partnership in terms of um, show me the money. Okay. And, and so. Um, well, to your point, that's why I asked about the career and technical education, because it says request. That's yeah. why I asked, and we'll, I'll wait for Dr. Savage to come. Is it a request? Or are we just doing an educational piece? Because those are two very different things. Well, we can take. So okay. if I may weigh in, weigh in on that, I think what staff is recommending is, is that we do an LVR for Cape Coral Tech to ask for the money to cover those costs. And then separately, we do an educational piece on the career in tech initiatives and what we're moving towards so that they know now what we are looking to do in the future. And then if we do next year or the year after, then decide to do an ask in relation to those things, we'll already have brought them along in the process of what we're doing. So the ask specifically would be for CCTC for money. And then the rest of it would just be a, here's everything else we're working on. But for this next one, innovation school, it would be different. It would be just a, it, it would, would just be an okay, education with no sure ask. Yes. I'm totally yep. Clear. Yeah. So, as and and what the process with this is 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 that we'll go through because this is a draft for for everybody to discuss, figure out how we want to handle, and then Ashley and Carol and I will take it, we'll rewrite it, we'll resend it out to you, and then you don't vote on it until the next meeting. So there's there's a process here where we have the ability, just like last year, to edit and do all of that. But for yeah. Innovation School, there would be no dollar amount ask. It would literally just be a here's what we're working towards. We want to let you know. Okay, so those two things, go ahead, Ms. Gittins, and then I'd like to kind of just poll the board and see on a consensus if, if they're in agreement with these first two things, and then we can move on. Yes. I, I believe, in, in my understanding, the confusion is the title legislative priorities, uh, in that this is what we are 
presenting to the legislators. For example, some of the other things are specific, but they're not like financial asks. So I think we need to separate somehow, at least I do, between this is priorities that we think should be looked at by the legislature as opposed to these are priorities that sure. the uh, Lee County School District would like you to look at and help us do. So, for example, I mean, the, like the health care and those types of things are things that other districts are looking at as well. And they are also things that the legislators have all already said they're interested in following through on. So us saying in our legislative priorities, we're on that bandwagon too, we think this should be a priority. So I think we need to make so, sure. For Benita, because we represent them too, as you know. So the way that we have done it is that we have a priority list for Benita and then we have you know, a piece of paper that they vote on, and then we have a separate document, which is their LBR request. Does exactly. that make more sense to that, separate them that out? Would sep like that, that would make okay. it good, because yeah. you've got the financial community. I agree with you. And then I'm we've got, here's what you guys need to be doing when you're sitting down in legislation. Yes. Well, I agree. I am Oh, excuse sorry, Miss Dorton. No, too. no. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Miss. No, Dorton. I was going to say I well, think that's what we were going to do. Except for right. we just put this all together we on one paper because it was this, easier this for is last year's. This, I mean, this right. is the comprehensive health stuff. So okay, I mean, I and, guess it's still this year. But Miss Fisher yeah. had a comment or question. Yeah, it was my understanding um, when we met at the end of June that we were going to take it step by step, and I think that what happened was then you requested for us individually to. Um, Submit what we think are could be priorities, and that went to Ms. Stillwell. Yes, and that's what this document is. It's not right. exactly right. Right. our right. legislative right. priorities, but it, it. it's the right. So we still have work to do on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah no, okay. and, and I understand that. I just think let's. I'm um, I'm gonna ask just for agreement, not even a. Well, I guess we could make it a consensus on what Ms. Stillwell said because we are in the position and it sounds like from the discussion to we want to move ahead we need the cte but this is more long range um so miss morgan do you agree with <laughs> probably i'm, I'm being asked <laughs> okay state re restate what you said i think i think for cte potentially you have two options and you could do both one of them would be to move forward with the ask for cape coral technical college mm -hmm. and then the second one would be to put together the educational piece that then would be shared with the legislators so that they knew what we were doing moving in the future yeah, so it would be words, part a and b and both of them yeah. could be done at the same time yeah in other words get rid of that we request that hits you in the face and do more educational so we can kind of put these two to rest exactly. are you yes. in agreement or comment or now, which are we talking about the, the <laughs> cape coral or are we talking about the innovation school okay well i, I cape coral cape coral yes yes and yes. on the innovation are you okay with making it an education piece and a total reworking of yes okay miss gittins okay yes i agree with the two things that are listed, career uh -huh. tech and innovation, as the ask part of our presentation and not as, and, and reworded yes. as our legislative priorities. That's what I have done. Okay, Ms. Jordan, are we're you? We're on the same page. Ms. Jordan, are you in agreement as well? I mean, so far, we're all in agreement over here. Well, I just, over. you know what? I just want to make sure. Ms. Jordan, are you in agreement? Yes, I'm in okay, agreement. Okay, we're, we're all, we're all. All right, and Ms. Fisher, <laughs> are you in agreement as well? Ms. Fisher. Okay. Uh, yes, and I just want to qualify that we're not actually asking legislators at this time for the 1.5 million. It is already built into the five-year plan. I mean, that is part of the plan, which I thought that I tried to say initially, but um, yeah. But yes, I, I'm in agreement. And with the innovation okay. school, uh, the education piece is fine because I don't think we're at. Yeah, and I'm I'm in agreement we're too. So we're all in agreement. We're all crystal it, clear too. on on it. <laughs> um, well, crystal is a little bit um, <laughs> clear, semi clear. 
It's All right, early funny. learning. Down before you leave. You know. <laughs> it's fine. Let's I have, open it to. I have more. Yes, Miss. Is Miss Patrika on the line now? No. Miss Patrika? She's not. She's still not? Okay. She was a minute ago. Oh, was she? I heard some. Okay. Well, she'll likely say something, or I'll check again after this one. Early learning. Um, let's open it first to comments, questions from the board, and um, Mrs. Gittins. Okay, in our new process <laughs> of ask and of just priorities, as presented here, where does this verbiage go? Which side of the? This is just priority. This is an educational piece, and yes. it's a piece that we support. And we're not asking for money in any way, shape, or form. We believe that this is something that the state needs to address across the board. Mm -hmm. And okay. since we just had the big VPK bill that passed, you know, we yeah. kind of need that time to put that in place, see how that's going. I'm sure there will be some sort of glitch bill, if yeah, you will. There will be. This year, there usually is after they do a large piece of legislation like that. So I think we kind of need to sit back and watch how things play out a little bit with BPK since we had such big movement last year. So do we, and you can cut the cameras for a minute, do we say something nice to them, you know, about the fact that we do have the VPK bill. Thank you for that. Yes, you know, we're very sincere we about love that. you guys. Oh, You're yeah, so good. Yeah. That it was didn't good. Get done, but it got movement, and that bill has been going on for three years, I think, Debbie. Okay. I'm not, I, it's right. been a long time that they've been working on that, and finally we have some movement. So, but, that's, so a, that's a big So, in effect. our verbiage, you know, it's thank supportive. you for supportive verbiage and thank you for moving this far. Yes. Here's what we, we need. need. <laughs> Here's what we need you to focus on. Yes. Well, and I think that that's the important part, Ms. Gittins, is the fact that, that in putting this down, just putting down early learning and saying thanks so much, we know there will be a glitch bill, so we need to be prepared. Yeah. And with that's where this comes proactive in. Proactive with the comments that Ms. Stillwell right. and staff have mm -hmm. added. These things are still hanging out there. Thank you so much. How, and, and they know that. It, this is very natural to have that happen in, a, in the process when you have a bill of that big that was very controversial, by the mm -hmm. way. So that controversy hasn't gone away. That controversy will be back this year. We know it'll get opened up again, so then it'll be time to be sure that, that our, our delegation and others, but Recognize our delegation this. know this is what really we see as affecting us. That, Okay, so, um, Mrs. Jordan. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to add, too, uh, every little piece of verbiage is not going to be written down because it's what we actually exactly. share with them as we're visiting or however that looks uh, in the upcoming year. So this is just a guideline for us, and then when we're there, that's when we do the, the thank you and then the add-on afterwards. Right, So it right. is all about um, relationships. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Okay, anything else on the early childhood? Ms. Fisher, just that this is part of the groundwork as we prepare to meet with our delegation. And this is a statewide issue, so it's gonna come up on FSBA and, and many of the other platforms, uh, not, not specific to Lee County. Okay, so it sounds like everybody's happy with this. Any? Yes. With, with the okay. comments Exceptional. That I made. Exceptional student education. Open to questions, comments from the board. No, not everybody. Okay with what is stated here. And again, yes, it's not the identical verbiage, but the idea of what is here, the concept. We're good to go on that one. All right, let's move to teacher certification and. Retention. There's no. Um, Not until public. There's no pu only public comment. Um, and and this is one that we have brought up. I'm not sure how many years we've we've brought it up before. So let's open with um, comments. Miss Patrika, are you on the line? I guess she's not. Okay. Miss Gates. Well, this is one that, that uh, I 
Uh, hold on one just, sec. Yes. Just, just so the board knows, um, Ms. Patrika is still having technical difficulties with the phone line. However, she is following the proceedings um, via YouTube. So as soon as they fix this issue, she'll be on the line. Okay, thank you so much. All right, Ms. Skittins, back to you. Okay, this is, it's been three years. <laughs> yeah, I know it's been. And, um, you know, this is something, and I, I was made privy to a situation just recently that this would have affected as well. And especially in the time that we are dealing with teacher shortage, not just us, but nationwide. Um, I just believe this is something we need to really focus on. Uh, I, I know personally of a couple of people that have, you know, missed, uh, been highly effective and missed uh, the mark for this test uh, on two or three different occasions. So this is something we need to do and continue to, um, uh, to focus on. The question I have is, is where, where are we with it? Do we have someone that is championing it? Is there someone that, because when I first brought it up, I know I had spoken with um, uh, Representative um, Donalds, and since he has moved up and, and on, but does he still, can we still tap him to help us with this or not? Or is there anybody that? Well, I would tell you, first of all, that Congressman Donalds did make movement on this, mm -hmm. and I know you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did, he did so in a very artful, from a legislative standpoint, yeah. le artful way. It didn't get everywhere, everywhere that it needed to be, but it got where he could get us. And so we feel very strongly about that. As far as going forward, do, I think your question is, do we have a champion in this? We do not at this particular moment sitting here right now today. But when this is adopted as something that, and, and I knew it would be because I know your passion about this and the, and the, and the passion of the entire board, but I know you've brought it up many times. And actually, I just read an article over the weekend, I believe, uh, and, and it wasn't local. It was an article about this is, this is a statewide issue, too. So this is something that we believe there will be, uh, there will be people who will be sensitive to, and we do believe people will carry it forward. And I say that with certainty only because of the fact that that what he did, he was able to make that happen with a very positive vote. So there are other people who are aware of the issue, and I'm sure there are other school districts throughout the 67 counties where this is being talked about too. So do we have a champion to give a, a name to you right this minute? We do not. However, we have this on our prior. Well, when, when you put this on our priority list, we will. Awesome. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Mrs. Jordan. I'm sorry. I'm going back one to the exceptional student education, if I, if I may. What, um, I'm not sure who put this one on here, and I was just curious because I know it's like three to three to five-year-old right now. So are we asking that, um, that those children are not getting what they need? I mean, who put this? Uh, the, uh, this um, particular um, priority draft was submitted by Mrs. Patrika. So I think that's why she's trying to call in so she can kind of explain a little bit as to why. Okay. I would just like to. I do know she met with staff who were supportive, but I wasn't privy to those meetings, so I don't have all the details. Okay. I'm okay with it being older, you know, but why not start, why not keep, you know, those kids that are there? So I would like to hear what she has to say. Do we have anybody here that represents ESC department? Um, here. This might be one that um, they would be able to explain a little bit, a little bit better, since um, apparently Miss Patrika met with them. Um, I'll see whether or not Miss Duncan is available. I'm sorry. I'll see whether or not Miss Duncan is available. Do you know sure. More? If she, yeah, and we can. And I'll text her and see. Shall we see if so? I think she knows. Yeah. Uh, Ms. No, Fisher? I, no, I think we're just asking for the age to be uh, increased, the, the span of time to be increased to nine years old because. So start at three and then end yes. up at. Yes, right. And, yeah. uh, okay, okay. Yeah. If that's the case, okay. I'm going well, to. Okay, well, I. No, I. Nine instead of three to five. That, is that what we're saying? Well, that's what Ms. Fisher just yeah. okay. said. I, I see that, but right. it's it's always good for us to know the rationale 
Sometimes it's difficult. Uh, yes, go ahead. It's difficult with the age to be able to do all of the um, testing that is needed to get accurate results for the testing. Sure. So increasing it to nine years old will allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of the rationale behind okay. that. I'm good then. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. And thank you. I don't have a problem with it at all, except that um, you know, if we're when we're out in the community and someone asks, it's it's good to, for us to have background in in you know the kinds of information like um, Mr. Pre Bruno just shared with us is one thing. Okay. Any anything else on the exceptional? And we'll go back to where we were. Yes. Okay, so my question on this conversation you just had, so we, you're increasing it to six, but it still starts at three years old, am I yes. correct? That's what I want to make sure. Because, yeah, I didn't want to. An increase in age. Yeah, it says so increase in age. It just in goes age. up until nine, instead of right. from three to six, it's three to nine. Right. Okay, that perhaps we should understanding. Be yeah. clear I, and I miss, say I miss, I miss that. three to you know three to nine instead of three to six because my concern was that you're moving up you know the age limit yeah. you know what that's I'm saying and we to, to sixty nine yeah. so make yeah. sure that's clear because we right. want to be able to identify these children's issues early as possible Absolutely. so not a problem okay thank Sorry, you I misspoke yeah. Okay, Thank you. can we Thank you. go back to where we were, this teacher certification and, re and retention? Um, did anybody have any other comments or questions on that one? Okay. Safety and security. Ms. Ms. Vaughn, yeah. Mr. Pre Bruno has. Okay. That Ms. Patrick is still having some difficulty with getting um, in touch, but I do think that there was. Um, a thought that she had to perhaps have multi-year contracts. I don't know if that fits in into this discussion here in terms okay, of certification. Hard. Is everybody hearing okay out in the audience? Okay, must be me when this <laughs> plexiglass here. Multi-year. Re repeat what you said, I heard half of it. Language added with regard to multi-year contracts instead of the one-year contracts now permitted by law. Okay, yes, Dr. Savage. Uh, thank you, we also do have uh, some staff on their way down, Ms. Bowen and Ms. Duncan, to answer any additional questions on the ESE section as well. They'll be available. Great, great. Ms. Skins. My question and concern on the teacher certification test for one, that general knowledge, I hear from a, a lot of people the difficulty in, you know, you take it and you miss it by so many points. In order to find that out, you have to jump through quite a few hoops, such as actually going to Tallahassee, setting up an appointment to see your exam, and then they only show you certain things. They do not show you enough information to know um, you know, I missed this area. And, and I'm saying this because people have told me they have done this on multiple occasions. They went to Tallahassee, asked to see their test. They were only shown certain things. They took the test again. It was a different test. Mm -hmm. And so each time they do, it's a different test. Mm -hmm. And it's re, I, I, don't, I don't know what we're testing for. And especially when you have a third grade, you know, elementary teacher that has to pass, you know, trigonometry and they don't know what they missed on the trigonometry question on the general knowledge. And it has over the years become more and more taxing for teachers. So along with this, I personally would like to know I guess looking into what 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 is evolving with this general knowledge, where is it going, how how it has changed over the last you know five to ten years. Well, that actually, I think you're talking about process, you know, about the process that the teachers actually have to go through, and that may be an educational point that that we all need too to be able to understand that because it's really hard to go and advocate for something if you and don't, you have don't all understand the facts. it right and with, with with the facts that you've been given are they anecdotal facts or are they facts that are facts 
Not all facts are happy facts. It always makes me think of that. Yeah, but, but not. not all facts are, are happy, happy facts. facts. Right. But, <laughs> but but understanding the process then may actually help to be able to make those make those points. Right. And to be able to say to these people that are very frustrated and have spent literally thousands of dollars to try to teach in our district, what 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 do we do for them? Maybe we need to have an educator. Okay, and, yeah, and um, I'm going to ask that we move this sure. along because um, we have about 15 minutes left on, on these topics and quite a few more. And um, I, I think what you said, adding an educational piece to this um, and, and giving information on how we have highly effective teachers that, for whatever reason, um, can't, but not can't pass, but have difficulty passing. And um, I think we can come back to advocating for maybe more transparency on, on the tests, um, releasing prior tests as College Board does and, and some other areas. But um, let's, let's go on to the safety and security. And I open it to, um, and then I'll come back and um, with the ESE, um, safety and security, comments, questions on this piece? Anybody? Ms. Yeah, Ms. Morgan. So I'm a little concerned about seeking school guardian funding since I don't think we've established as a district that that's really what we want. It is, a work, it is scheduled to be a workshop topic that we will be discussing, I think, at some point either today or tomorrow. I, I think we need to have a better understanding of what our community expects. Uh, I think we need to know more what the SROs think. I think we need to know about funding. If this is totally state funded and it doesn't impact our budget, that's one thing, but we do need to know if the public believes that that's, this is something we want. If it involves funding, our funding, then I think stakeholders should have an opportunity to say if they want to spend money, district money, on school guardians or whether they want to spend it on mental health and student services. So I don't think this is a topic that we as a board have agreed uh, that we want to advance. I certainly don't believe we're ready to advance it. Yeah, and I, I would echo what Ms. Morgan said as far as that bullet point. Um, I'm, I don't, uh, we haven't had the discussion, the workshop, um, we haven't revisited this, so I personally, I would say, I don't like that bullet point, I would like to see it eliminated. Um, other comments, questions? Uh, Ms. I think, I think Ms. Jordan had her hand up oh, first. Okay. I was just going to say I totally agree with you as well. We have not had this conversation, and I don't think that should be there at all. Okay. So, and, and uh, you know, I do agree, and in the, along the lines of safety and security, we have had the conversation in the past, as Mrs. Morgan uh, alluded to, and I think that we need to have the conversation with our safety and security people, our law enforcement agencies, and I know there's been some discussion community-wise about how we're going to be staffing our schools with SROs, and I know that um, the Sheriff's Department and some of the local police departments are committed to being able to be the ones that are there, and then I think um, Mr. Newland can address the, uh, you know, the issue of how they have the ability to really intervene immediately where the guardians would not necessarily have that capacity. So I, I don't think I'm ready to move forward with this at this point. Mrs. Gittins. Um, I agree with everyone. I think that when we present something to the legislators, we should have all of our I's dotted and T's crossed and crossed and ducks in a row before we go to them and say something that we don't quite have together, so I agree with everyone on that. Okay, and it looks, yeah, uh, it looks to me that we have kind of a, 
a variety, and they all have to do with safety and security, but some of them are quite different issues. Dr. Savage. Just want to add uh, some discussion about the first two bullets in that piece, and of course, uh, uh, Mr. Newland can can add if there's something that I'm omitting. But but I think the the real intent behind clarifying these two pieces is number one that if we're going to have uh, safe school officers, um, which we are, there are different criteria to meet that safe school officer. Currently, our district strategy is with SROs. Um, but, but it's really trying to establish with this piece um, a goal around 1,000 students for an SRO. So for example, having an SRO at an elementary school of 300 students versus um, a, a high school maybe that has 2,000 students, the current letter of the law states that they must have one SRO, uh, one safe school officer for each site. So that doesn't necessarily address the complexity of work and the, the volume of work that they're doing. The second piece to address the, the, um, and the, and the Marjorie Stoneman grand jury, uh, they, they absolutely were looking to potentially make some recommendations around how to address what really is the need um, you know, for larger populations and older students, the nature of work that occurs there to keep everyone safe instead of just one per, per building as the minimum. But at the same time, the need for funding for that piece, because currently we're engaged in a partnership with each of our municipal partners. Uh, and that's, that's one aspect of this that um, different districts handle in different ways. Some districts have their own police force. You, know, you see a lot of different configurations around the state. So the real ask, I think, in that first bullet is just to make sure that the funding is appropriate to, if this is something that is a priority, that the funding is there. Now, the second bullet, where that comes into play, is really to make sure we don't conflate it with guardians, that guardians is another option that is available to meet the safe school officer. However, many of the folks in the law, enforce community, the law enforcement community, they are, they are willing to consider guardians, but typically as a supplemental, what they refer to as a force multiplier. Um, and so that's kind of the intent. Oh. I think we're, we're getting Ms. Patrika, but um, that's really the intent of the Guardian program when it was uh, derived was uh, that, that it could be a force multiplier, so you have more folks potentially. The sheriff has to authorize that program uh, for each county, that's the, the requirement there. So the, the additional piece on there, and it really comes back to funding, is that if you are going to authorize that work, that it isn't drawing from the same pool of funds, so that you aren't doing one in lieu of the other, but that the guardians would be a supplemental piece and separate. So I think just to speak to those two bullets, that is I believe the intent of the priorities as written. Um, but uh, Chief Newland, if you have any uh, anything that I may be forgetting to add, or uh, Mr. Parfit, I know this is not a new new conversation. Good afternoon. Uh, no, I think most of it was covered. I think the only thing we have to look at is consider we talk about a force multiplier, what would be the intent of a school guardian at, at what type of school we, would we be talking about for that coverage to be properly to, uh, covered, but we have to remember a few things. Uh, as a guardian, there are a lot of things they cannot do. They can't do a lot of things our current SROs do, uh, handle all the reports through uh, law enforcement agencies, uh, any type of arrest law offense. You're still going to be calling upon outside resources to come in, even though you have a guardian on the premise. Also, guardians cannot be used as part of the threat assessment team. So you have to still have an SRO or officer involved in a threat assessment team as well. And you have to look at the funding. There's funding available for the training of, of the guardians, and I believe only a $500 bonus going towards that. That's the only funding available. So I just want to add that in as well. Some other things just to think about. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and, and I know that this discussion about guardians is uh, an upcoming discussion that we already have on our radar. So, um, and but this this is, clear in the fact that it says hire guardians supplemental to SROs, but it's still a conversation that we need to um, have, have again as, as a board. So it sounds like most of the people on the board are wanting to hold back on that bullet, at least for now. Ask Patrika, is she on? Oh, that's right. Ms. Patrika, are you on? I am, thank you, and I would like to talk on this issue. Last year, I had problems with uh, school guardian being included in the budget because 
the line item for training for school guardians had been specifically vetoed by the governor. It's my understanding that that money has been included in this year's budget. And so I no longer have a budgetary objection to this. And I like the idea of including school guardians in our uh, platform because it is a more efficient option frequently for our charter schools. Many charter schools want to hire a guardian instead of an SRO. And as you know, they operate outside our oversight with regard to things like SROs. And since it is a school choice system, I believe they should be given the choice to hire a guardian instead of an SRO if that's what they want to do. So I'm happy with leaving this in here and perhaps we should clarify with um, really making that supplemental language stronger because you're right, this is a fourth multiplier in our traditional public schools, but I'd like to see it be made available as an option for our charter schools. Those are my comments, thank you. Points there and any, any which way, I think it sounds like all of us would like to have more of a discussion and um, Ms. Patrika said clarify. Um, board members, yes, Dr. Savage. And I apologize, uh, Madam Vice Chair. I, I just wanted one more piece I think is probably pertinent to this conversation and really the thrust I believe behind the first bullet is really an increase in the allocation of the safe school funds. Mm -hmm. I think that is that is something that, that certainly could be a priority because no matter what mechanism we use to keep the schools safe, there's currently a shortfall on our side of it and that's money that, that then we have to cover the additional gap. Um, uh, Dr. Dr. Desmore, if you have any, I don't know if you know off the top of your head or close a ballpark amount, but it's, it's significant. And, and, and the reason why that's so significant is because Let's say that one of our municipal partners chooses a different path. You know, they say maybe they, what if they're, they, you know, come into financial hardship and they decide they don't want to do this. The burden may fall to us. And so it's really important that the funding provided by the state really reflects this piece. So Dr. D, are you willing to add some clarity to that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so uh, with the safe schools funding that we receive now from the state, we still do add in additional funding in order to fund all of the SROs that we currently have on our school at our schools. Now, the safe schools funding is used to fund um, primarily uh, school resource officers, but also some other minor things, such as um, some after school programs um, at some schools, um, Saturday schools, things like that. Uh, but we're right now in the budget also um, including just in regular general funds outside of safe schools, another about one and a half million dollars in order to um, completely fund the SRO program as we have it now. Okay. Other comments, questions from the board? Mrs. Gittins. So are we basically saying that our concern as far as legislative priority with safety and security is funding overall for the safety and security issues as opposed to our own specific needs. If I may, through the vice chair, respond to that. Uh, is that a question for me, uh, through the vice chair, if I may respond? Go ahead, yeah, yeah okay. go ahead. Uh, so, yes, essentially it's a funding, but it's trying to tether us to a desired outcome of that one SRO per 1,000 students would kind of start to set a standard, um, a, an operating standard that says this is the amount of money we need in order to provide this type of service per, on a per student basis. That's the goal. Um, there, and there has been some discussion of establishing such standards at the state level. They are aware that that is a need um, just beyond the one per school, which is the current requirement minimum of one per school, unless uh, Mr. Newland has anything else to add on that, correct? Thank you. Okay. So basically then we're just asking for a second look at the requirement and then the financial ask piece comes after that. So it's educational? That's correct. We haven't ever put a dollar amount with 
this priority in the past. We've always made it educational. We've never actually gone to the legislature and said this district needs X dollars in order to accomplish this. It's been more of a larger picture, educational, that this is what we think needs to happen. And I, I just would agree with it worded in the same way we have talked about it before. We need help in prioritizing this. Yep, bullet. The, the wording for us, the verbiage on that first bullet is fine. It's the bullet on the second one. Mm -hmm. So it's the guardians. About and if that charter. is with the charters, then I think it needs to be specific to charter schools. Because, and I could be, my understanding is, is that the sheriff's offer has to pull that trigger for the entire county, but yeah, charter schools is different. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if Ms. Patrika wants to look at having the option for charter schools to have a guardian, then I think it needs to say charter schools because this to me reads like the district right. is seeking mm -hmm. money to get into the guardianship program, which is a different thing. Okay, Mrs. Patrika, do you have a response to that? Yeah, thank you. And I do agree with that. I do want guardians to be an option for charters, but in addition, I would like more funding for us in the fourth multiplier arena. So if we have two SROs at a school and we get funding from the state for a school guardian on top of that, I think we would be crazy not to take advantage of that. The more safety and security in our schools, the better, given the climate that we're living in right now. So I'd, I'd like to see that um, language clarified where it says to hire supplemental guardians to serve as force multipliers to SROs and to give charter schools the option of hiring school guardians instead of SROs or something along those lines. That's what I'd like to see. Those are my comments. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Dr. Savage. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Just to kind of clarify to some of the comments that have been made um, just regarding this piece. So it's absolutely true that for some charters, let's say a credit recovery charter that has a very small number of students, um, elsewhere in the state, we do have occasions where they may choose to use a guardian in lieu of um, it just as a more cost effective option. In other cases, they've had a person who is a otherwise staff member trained as a guardian, so they receive the additional uh, screening and training, and it might be the principal um, who, who, who gets that additional supplemental training. So from a cost effectiveness standpoint, that is something that some charters do employ elsewhere in the state to meet that safe uh, school officer requirement. In our district, uh, we have really developed a very strong partnership with law enforcement, and so I think the only concern and the reason why that line would be separate funding is that we would not want to put forward anything that would allow the funding to be depleted from the source that allows us to meet what we believe is a minimum standard to keep our students safe every day in partnership with our law enforcement community. We would not want that to be drawn away for a supplemental force as currently it would have to be done. And so this is just a, a key, uh, a key distinction on those two bullets that I think we just want to make sure we're, we're all yeah, of understanding. So, yeah, so it looks like that second bullet. Um, I, I do want to point out, even though this is a very important discussion, that we are at, we are past our time allotment. We're going to continue going over all of this, but that we, um, let's be respectful of, of, of time. Um, we have, we're going to go back to the um, ESE real quickly and um, get the rationale. And, and Ms. Vaughn, I apologize. I misread that when I was reading this, so I understand it better. I just okay. Wanted okay. To well, she. Yeah. For I that. mean, I, I think the wording is clear, but um, we were also at one point asking for the rationale so that we can. So if you could just help us out a little bit. So this priority was related to eligibility of developmentally de delayed students. And in the state of Florida, um, the DD label, developmentally delayed, is removed at the age of six. So for us, that um, in some other states, that is removed later. They have some opportunities to remove that at either age eight or nine. So removing it at age six uh, creates some 
some issues with us with evaluations. At age six, we, uh, we don't always have those students for pre-K, so some of those six-year-olds are just coming to us. And we may not have had enough experience with them to, to know if they need a different eligibility, so sometimes we need a little bit more time uh, before we, we just remove that. And in order to put them on another eligibility, we have to also go through several steps. So it's not a process that happens very quickly, and we want to make sure that students get what they, they need. Um, another thing with evaluations is they tend to get bottlenecked with students when they're at that age, so when they first come in, so we get a number of evaluations, or when students who are in our programs in pre-K are moving to kindergarten, we get a number of requests for evals to try to remove DD. And then, Teresa, do you have any um, other? Um, no, I mean, that's, those are some of the main reasons. Um, one of the things that happens, we are a very transient state and we do get a lot of students who are moving here. Um, when they move and they're eight or nine, they come in with a developmentally delayed label. They're all, they're, they're out of compliance, so to say, when they, when we get there. So if, let's say somebody moves here in, um, September with a developmental delay and they're too old for that we still have to serve them we don't get funding for them because if we can't get them um, on an appropriate um, eligibility area by that first FTE date then we don't get that um, additional funding through um, our system and thank you so much ladies I think that gives us the rationale and it's an excellent ration rationale um, can let's any other questions I'm just gonna we we have all of these to go through and a lot more um, and I think we have people that are going to want to speak today so um, budget and finance is where we are right now um, comments questions let's not back up let's just go budget and finance please um, Dr. Desimores, do you have anything to add on um, why this, why this um, is important for us as um, one of our legislative priorities? Yeah, good morning, thank you. Um, Nothing to add unless anyone has any questions. Uh, the only thing related to this particular priority is, as you all know, we've been discussing capital quite a little bit and in detail, um, this particular statute right now really limits us in terms of how we, the different funding sources we can use to pay for um, some of our new construction if it doesn't meet the cost per student station. This just opens that up, gives us some flexibility so that we can utilize all of our funding sources in the best possible way in order to cover um, all of the capital needs, specifically in relation to construction of new schools moving forward in the future. Yeah, and I think we have had this discussion at least right. a few times right. in, in the past. So mm -hmm. is everybody good with that? Any quick comments, questions, Mrs. Kittens? Um, mine is, this to me rolls up into the discussion of uh, uh, the, the portables and being held accountable that you can't build, you know, you know what I'm saying, that you have this many portables so you can't build this, this school. All of that kind of goes together with the student station to me. How they allocate student stations. Is, is that? Uh... Uh, not Well, not necessarily. This really speaks to the cost of building a school, right? So with the cost per student station. So at this point, we've either gotten that school approved within the survey or we determine we're not needing approval because we're going to use some local funding source for that building, such as um, you know a sales tax or an, an impact fee. So we're really talking about the the cost related to the building of that school and what funding sources we're allowed to use for that school based on the cost. So we wouldn't have to use certificates of participation as often? Uh, potenti potentially, if they change that, either wouldn't have to use certificates of participation, or even if we do, because we probably would, we um, are more open as to what funding sources we can use to pay back those certificates of participation. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any, anybody else? OK, that takes us to facilities. 
-hmm. Board members, comments, questions on this priority. Just a quick note that these all carried over from last year. Yep. So all of these were on your priority list before. Anybody? Okay, comprehensive health. And this, this is one that we've seen um, a few times. And I'm, I'm gonna, Mrs. Fisher, I know it's one of your passions. I, I am heavy on this one too, but you're the expert here. So what comments I, do you have? Um, um, I think maybe um, I would ask Ms. Green to comment first. Okay. And then, uh, and then I'll fill in. All righty. Ms. Green, important. go that for it. I think it's important we stick with it. Thank you, Ms. Fisher and Madam Chairman. Th there was movement this year, something that we really are all celebrating because it was really, it was a good bill. It, it was one that was not met with a lot of controversy. It's one that people got behind and supported. So we did have movement this year from, from a policy side. Uh, when it comes to the dollars associated with that, you know, we always have to continue to look for that. And, and I would say that my feeling on the, the comprehensive health proposal we have here is it's one that's a non-starter at this particular juncture. Non-starter from an, an LBR standpoint because that's exactly how it was originally put out there. What was really wonderful about that is we did have an opportunity to use that as a sounding board and educate, back to this educating folks and bringing them along, educating our legislators and bringing them along. And then thankfully this year what happened was we actually had a policy bill. So that now is going to impact the entire state. What I would add to that, however, is much like what we've talked about with other bills, with the teacher certification, with CTE, with all of those other types of things, is that we, we need to use this as an educational platform, again, to continue to support support our legislators supporting us in our goals. And our goals, obviously, I believe are still to make sure that we're pushing this and pushing for it to have a financial uh, basis to. This is the, the bill that was proposed this past year actually did have monies associated with it, uh, but they were monies from a grant, I believe. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have those notes with me, but I believe they were from a grant. So we were able to have that come forward now. Going into this year, I believe strongly that we need to add as a priority of ours to make sure that the funding is in place statewide. Not that we're going forward, with a funding proposal for Lee County, we're going forward saying this is a great idea and it should be handled, we should be doing this across the entire 67 counties. That's my opinion on that. Did I, did I answer? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, you did. And, and I think that, you know, as we have an increased awareness in the mental health issues, especially uh, since Parkland and connected with the pandemic. Uh, that's been another reason, I think, where we've gotten the support and we've had input from uh, other districts statewide. And I also think that we are, we, we're the model. We can be the model program for the state. And there's so much existing in the, in the uh, state curriculum and uh, with the awareness of the Florida legislature and, and like Senator Pasadomo and others have been Absolutely. definitely uh, advocates. And I think that we can't afford not to have comprehensive health education. The state has recently given us specific things that we need to do, substance abuse uh, prevention and mental health awareness. That's all part of comprehensive health education. I had a conversation and heard a uh, news special this past weekend uh, about the epidemic of type 2 diabetes with, with um, young people. I mean, we, we can't afford not to do this because we're not going to have kids healthy and ready to learn if we don't do this. And we can teach reading through this content area. There was a teacher um, several years ago at one of the local middle schools who had a portable classroom, and on her door, she said, welcome to sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Every kid in the school wanted to sign up for that, and they did read, and they did math, and they did a lot, you know? I mean, it was, it's a life skill. So I, 
I asked Ms. Roy, our health coordinator, to be here this morning. And I don't know, Leisha, would you have anything that you would want to add to that? Because she is like the guru of health and has all the connections at the state level, so knows what's coming down the pike next. Thank you. So you guys, I know, are tired of hearing me come about We're comprehensive health. We're never tired of hearing you. Uh, this has been, gosh, what, Mary, a 10-year process. Um, and along the way, the number one thing that everybody says is, you know, it's so important, but it's an unfunded mandate. I think continuing with this, I know uh, you, you guys are aware of the State Board of Ed rules that came in for mental health, substance use and abuse, child trafficking. Uh, this past spring, the Department of Ed asked me to assist in writing specific substance use and abuse standards. Uh, we had House Bill, I think, 157 that just came through about first aid and CPR training in 6th and 8th grade in the middle school and 9th and 11th at the high school. Um, we've got water safety. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're basically restating things that have been in statute for over 30 years, but again, unfunded. Uh, I know there's been concern about getting um, certified health education teachers. Um, you know, unlike many of the core subjects where there's reimbursement for test taking, uh, we do not have that, but it is in, in our, our ask. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a lot for, for teachers to, when there are not a lot of secure positions saying we are doing this, there will be positions open, they're not going to spend that money to take that exam. Um, I also do know that the, um, the state exam prep test that uh, several of us designed has been extremely effective in allowing people to pass that health certification exam, which is the number one most failed exam. It is the most difficult one to, to pass, and since I'm not really a math person, I can't believe it beat out like calculus or something. Um, but uh, I, I think that it is really, really important that we stick with this. Um, we're not the only district that knows that this is unfunded. They're obviously continuing to add things um, into this needs to be done. So do we do it as a comprehensive health program or do we do it as we're pulling kids out to do various things once a month? And we know once a month stuff is not effective. It just doesn't do anything. So uh, is there anything I can answer for you or? Thank you. No, I think you're the, the, the information center and we really appreciate all the work that you do. Thank you. So, yeah, and uh, to, to Ms. Roy's la last point, uh, I had the opportunity to talk with um, a group of students and um, not one of them had any use for the, um, the state program, the, the, the videos, and it, it's just not done in a, in a way that, um, uh, you know, there are some teachers that embrace it and have discussion but then and and I'm not putting any blame on teachers because they're pretty much you know here <laughs> do this um, it, it, you know it's I, I think it's something that's very important and I think all of us do because it's been appearing every year so um, we are quite a bit over on, on this, and I'm going to ask the ladies to wrap it up, and then if um, board members have any additional questions, to um, send emails um, to Ms. Jordan. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. We have we have a transportation item that oh we didn't discuss, which was the one before comprehensive health. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the the PIP for the school buses, which is something we oh, have been okay, sorry. Doing every year to, oh, yeah. to, to Ms. Stilwell's comment. This was one that was on every year. So we just want to make sure that it's discussed. Oh, all right. Please. Thank you. Let me go back. Facilities, comprehensive health. Where was it? No, it, it's I don't see right. it. Yeah, it's right on the, it's right right on the very top. Where is it? Right on the very, it's very, very top. To Transportation's right. on the right-hand side, and this has been on, I think, every year. It's on the last page. Such a lightning rod. Yeah, the, the, the PIP, the the PIP issue is always, every it's year we discuss insurance. PIP, and Just usually right nothing happens. But. Oh, 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 I see. Okay, that's why I missed it, because it was over okay, on right. the side. Um, 
All right, cool. So thank you for pointing that out. Anybody have a comment or question on that one? It's just an ongoing one. Are we good? It's ongoing. It, uh, okay. It's obviously an issue that's ongoing and PIP comes up every year and we discuss it every year and it gets too volatile. <laughs> okay. I, I, I would, the only, if I might. Yes, closing, mention, closing remarks, uh, ladies. I, I appreciate the fact that we've had an opportunity today to, to talk about these in a little more detail. I know that Ms. Stilwell and, and she will be working with us and we'll be working on fine wordsmithing, tuning. fine tuning, get some things, get some better numbers, get things put together for you. The only other thing I would say is that I, I noted that we talked as we were going through, Madam Chairman, we talked about um, uh, all of these all of these issues now we've discussed and and we know we have direction on all of those except I mean I I think the board I think we got what the direction was even whether there was a consensus or not taken on mm -hmm. any of those yeah. issues so I feel comfortable with that Ms. Stilwell you're, I, I know we'll work with you and we'll get the wordsmithing done. We can update the document and then send it out to everybody. Okay. So we're, we're good. What Thank you. We appreciate you Thank on you. all levels, and uh, I think we'll be yep. Thanks. And seeing you and hearing from you. Absolutely. And as soon as we have these all put together, we'll start making appointments Perfect. with our legislators to, uh, to start actually helping to educate them on our needs. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. All right. So now we move ahead to search firm discussion. Um, is this something, Mrs. Dupree Bruno, that you're going to be talking about? I was thinking that we might. I'll let her forget her jacket. Do, do you want to start with the um, the draft of the um, agreement? We can do that if we can take like a five minute break so Ms. Tortosa Ursley can come out and set everything up to do the presentation. Okay, sure, absolutely. Five minute break. Thank you. Don't forget your jacket. <laughs>
know. Okay, we're about we're ready to get started. So. Um, <laughs> We're we're ready, Miss Gittens and They're coming. Good, thank you for Thank you, Captain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, Miss Vaughn. Is Miss Gurnall's fault? All right, so uh, we are ready to reconvene and we are going to be discussing um, the search firm Ray and Associates that we um, chose sometimes it seems like the other day and other times it seems like two months ago, but um, we did at our last meeting choose Ray and Associates um, and on the screen uh, we have the um, contract, and I'm going to ask um, Ms. Dupree Bruno to um, answer any questions that the board has on this. Uh, she shared a first draft, and I know that uh, many of the board members sent her suggestions uh, and, and changes. So, um, Ms. Dupree Bruno, do you want to start with just some generalities on this? Thank you, um, Madam Chair. So basically we have the Rain Associates uh, contract. This is the second draft of the contract. Um, the changes that were uh, brought forth to Rain Associates have been adopted and accepted. So I don't know if there's any other discussion or questions that I may answer for the board. Okay, so it's open to discussion and questions. Mrs. Gittins. I have a couple, they're pretty simple. On item, I think it's the first number six. And I was a little confused where it says work with the school board of Lee County staff and those selected by the board in the development of an accurate informational flyer or whatever. Who, who is that? I mean, are we assigning? Because the reason I brought it up, um, it, with, it needs to be also on our website and our web page, and so if you know, I could be involved in that or whoever should be involved with that. They, they will work with whoever the board designates to work with different parts of the process. So if that is something once we, you know, once they come in and they start discussing the timeline and the different tasks that need to be done, then the board can designate who it wants to. Okay. Uh, the next question was, I forget where it was on here, but I, I made a note to myself about board members may communicate, uh, but not to direct Rain Associates. So I know that we as board members have the ability to talk with them as often as much as we want to, but just being careful with the caveat, not directing anything that they will be doing. Um, and the other one, I don't know why I says it, I put down public record in conjunction with the board superintendent web page. Not sure why I put that. I'll come back to it. But I, I think it had, there was something that was stated about uh, confidentiality in certain documents and so that was removed because of the public records law okay. so when I talked to them I explained to them what the statute requires and that's why we have the new language in there with regards to public records so it would be handled pretty much like we we did the interim that um, the advertisement the um, Applications that we receive, all of that will be public record and therefore will be on our web page as well. Yep. So okay. uh, their goal is to make sure either the day that whatever that record is created, the board has it, or at least within one business day, the board will have it. So you can put it up on the website, however you choose to move forward with that. Yeah, and for ev everybody out there, if you haven't found it under Section 2 General Provisions, 
um, right there, Ray and Associates Incorporated will comply with the Florida Public Records Act as follows. So, um, and we also added it, I believe, in um, section 20, which was a new paragraph that we added with regards to the timeline for providing the documents. Yeah, number 20. Okay, is there anything else, board, board members, that you want it? I have one more. To talk about. Okay, go ahead. Okay, on number five, the... Five under the, what section? Uh, the very first section, where an associate's will. Um, Mm -hmm. Market analysis of superintendent pay across the state, et cetera, et cetera. How, how will that, and this may be a Dr. Desmore or somebody question, but um, will, since that has, we've already done that market survey within the district for executives and for different pay. So is this going to be additional? Are we looking at changing? what we have already agreed as a salary, or how is well, that gonna work? That's part of their process, and it's part of something that they'll bring before you, So, because this is gonna go nationwide, so they're gonna come in and provide you with the market analysis, this is what's going on in New York, this is what's going on in Florida, this is what's going on in Alabama, so that the board has a very wide perspective in terms of what the market is. The one that we have the, um, Ad was for the interim superintendent, and I know that the board wanted to keep the salary the same. This will be for the national search, so this is already part of their process. It's part of whatever package that you're already paying for. And as we are going into the final stages of our budget acceptance, since this is end of July, 1st of August, um, will that, if it's a change, will we have to do an amendment or something to the budget? If it is an, if it's not budgeted now on this preliminary budget that we already have, we're going to be looking at I think tomorrow. So legally, we'll be able to just make an adjustment to it if we need to. You'll be able to make an adjustment, but that's a, a question that can better well be answered by Dr. Desmore in terms of that process and how that would happen. So tomorrow, when we have the budget update, we can bring that up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and just oh. Go ahead, Ms. Fisher, you okay, had a question? Yeah, so I don't know if I missed it somewhere, but I know that um, one of the things that's included when we have start to have candidates is the uh, community forum online. Uh, are, have, are we not going to have a, 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 an appointed community committee? I mean, selection. So this is all part of what they're going to be discussing with you and getting guidance from the board. Okay. How you want things to be set up, how many community forums do you want, who do you want on those committees, all of that is going to be part of the services that will, they will be providing to you. All right, thank you. Right, and we have in um, the other four docs um, for this section, there's Choices. There's. They. They have the. Um, if we. If we go to. What is it? Called the. The samples. Samples. Uh, fin, uh, finalist interview schedules and. Um, it. They're, they're. They're a very professional company. Yes. And just from looking at that, it appears when they do these discussions, um, there'll be opportunities as we have discussions for the public to weigh in and as well um, what we what we set up and lots of different um, lots of different scenarios on on how we can and how we can do that and I'm sure that they will um, these are just um, samples that they will um, personalize right to our district and so um, I, I feel very comfortable Thank you. With the professionality of, of this group and um, and quite frankly, their their process that they want to discuss along along the way. Okay. Um, before I get to you again, Mrs. Gittens, um, Ms. Patrick, are you still on the line? Hi. Yes. Thank you. you what I the only issue that I really have with with this was making sure that we had teacher. Um, not teacher, but Falcon South 
committee involvement and specific involvement by the business community, but what I'm hearing um, develop with this discussion is that those are conversations we'll have with Ray and Associates after this agreement is signed. So I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with things the way they stand now and having those conversations with Ray and the board as this progresses. Those are my comments. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Jordan, go ahead and... Uh, what I was going to say is we had asked um, for them to send us the uh, stakeholders, like interview schedule, and they had sent that to us. So um, we do have what they had shown, and it's like administrative meetings, student meetings online, teachers meeting, classified community forums, parent forum. They have, I mean, they've tried to hit every single walk of life that you can imagine to make sure that, um, that everybody is heard. And then we'll, and then they even showed a um, like the finalist interview and how you know how that could be set up as well. But they're they're going to work with us, the board, to determine how many of these um, community forums we will have and like in person, online, or etc. So of course, online they can do it's much easier and they can do as many as they possibly possibly want because you can get more people on that and everybody can have the luxury of being wherever they're at and still participate versus um, coming in face to face. But we still, you know, it's up to us what we want them to do. Um, so we are, um, as a collective um, board, we'll be uh, directing them on what we what we want to do. Yeah, and, and that's one of the benefits of having a company like this that uh, they have various processes, they have the samples and all, and yet they're not etched in stone. They're, we are the ones that will um, be able to personalize with them. Okay, Mrs. Gittins, you had a question or comment? It was answered, thank oh, you. okay. Anybody else have a question, comment about anything that's on this, on this page? So, Madam Chair, what I would request is um, permission to bring this forward tomorrow during good call. So we'll do a consensus on, on this. All right. Speaking of the draft as written, Ms. Morgan. Yes. Ms. Gittins. Yes. Ms. Jordan. Yes. yes. Ms. Fisher. Yes. Okay. Mrs. Patrika. And I say yes, so we are good to go and to bring this forward so we can move on to our next step. Okay, now we are, I believe, at the public comment section. So, um, Attorney Dupree Bruno, would you read the guidelines to public comment, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. School board policy provides the opportunity at this point of the meeting to address the board concerning any matter from this meeting's agenda. If you completed a blue card, please make sure that it is in the basket. If you need a blue card, please advise as they're located in the hallway outside or we can provide you one. The rules concerning public comment are posted in the back. Comments will be made from the microphone in the back. Please be advised that the board does not respond during public comment to remarks made by speakers. At the end of the public comment period, the board vice chair, Ms. Vaughn, may address any concerns or the assignment of any concerns or requests to the superintendent. Speakers and those attending the meeting are expected to act in a respectful manner. The purpose of public comment is to provide feedback on today's agenda only. Personal attacks on individuals or abusive language are prohibited. In addition, clapping, hissing, and booing, unreasonably loud and or offensive language, swearing, cursing, or display of temper are prohibited. Speakers who fail to follow proper decorum in the chambers will be ruled out of order. Any speaker continuing with such remarks will be required to relinquish the microphone per board policy 1.11. The time per speaker is three minutes. You will find a countdown on the big screen in the front of the room. Once your time has elapsed, the microphone will automatically shut off. We encourage you to address the board as a whole versus individual board members as they act as a collective body. Please state your name prior to making your comment. And we would ask that those wishing to make comments to please line up in the back of the room. 
Okay, do we have any cards? There are five speakers. Okay, is there anyone in the room who wishes to speak who did not have the opportunity to fill out a card? Okay, so we will proceed with our five speakers who filled out cards. Go ahead and okay. begin. Okay. Good morning, Denise Nystrom. Oh, can you just hold on so we can get oh. the clock up there? Yeah, that's what I was Sorry. <laughs> oh. But then I thought I'd get an extra minute in there. So. There she goes. <laughs> you gotta take it back. Okay. <laughs> um. I think I'm under three minutes today anyway. Okay, in general, I just wanna say that when we're talking about schools or CTE, Ms. Gittins, I do not think that you are selfish in any way when you are expressing your concerns about the school buildings that are being built or renovated, as there are concerns with regard to many schools that are in East Lee, and there are needs for new buildings and building renovations and CTE opportunities. So just so you know, um, I hear that sentiment throughout the community and I wanna share that with you. And what I am wishing is that, I know it would be a daunting task, but if you could somehow divide it up and the board members could make it into all of the various meetings and meet with all of the people that understand those buildings and have a complete list that they can start to do renovations and or whatever it is that they need for all of the buildings so that all of the students have what they need. Um, regarding the permanent superintendent search, I'm not sure how quickly you're looking to begin this search, but it seems like we're almost like bonsaiing into it. I really hope we're not. Um, we now have somebody at the helm, who, and you have a golden opportunity to give that person uh, a decent amount of time to see how he performs as superintendent, uh, because if he actually serves this district well, which he very well might, because he is an inside candidate who could hit the ground running, um, it wouldn't be fair to move so quickly hiring a permanent superintendent without having him, without having given Dr. Savage the chance, um, you know, to see what he can do. Uh, and lastly, with regard to the comprehensive health plan, I noticed the words family life, and I hope that that is not code for gender identification or sexual orientation. There are several issues that were still not answered. Um, after everything in, that occurred in May and June with regard to the code of conduct. I certainly hope that the um, district has taken a look at the bathroom situation in all of the buildings and has figured out a way that students can have a single stalled bathroom that locks so that it becomes a non-issue. Um, and I hope that the district understands that families teach morality. Um, and I sincerely hope that we're not eliminating the pronouns he and she. Thank you, everybody. So just a reminder that the only discussion is with regards to the items on this right, agenda. Go ahead, next speaker please, please state your name. Hello, my name is Kate Owens. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, if we wanna set the timer back, I wanna make sure you can hear me okay because I would like to be the voice for your most vulnerable population in your Lee schools, which is the ESE kids who do not have a voice. I'd like to comment on the legislation that is up to extend the age of hashtag developmentally delayed up until age nine. I think it's beautiful. I am an example of an autism mom that has locked in to every early intervention, every service, every prescription that my doctors have prescribed to make my son's quality of life better. I have been training for this moment for the past five years since our diagnosis at age three. I think it's beautiful that we're gonna extend the age, that we're gonna provide services, but what we need to do is, I need to ask the board, and thank you so much for your time, are we providing quality service? Are we providing the industry standard for kids with special needs? And I know I'm not supposed to say it, but hashtag autism, in the words of Wilbur Hawk, I'm not supposed to pigeonhole us, because it is language delay, it is hearing impairment, it's all the and it's the developmental delay that causes behaviors. As of right now, 
women of the board, we do not have a BCBA, which is a licensed behavior analyst, here in the position of Lee County Schools. Kids that don't have language, I'm sorry, kids that don't have language are going to speak to us parents, educators, and neurotypicals with behaviors. That is their way of communicating. It is our job to be able to diagnose what the function of the behavior is and you have to be a BCBA to understand how that works. So we need another thing, Collier does it. Collier bases all their ESE programs on behavior therapy. They also take data because what data says is numbers don't lie. People can have opinions, but graphs don't lie. That will tell us if we are truly making goals in the ESE world. I am not the only parent in Lee County that has been a due process person. There are many more to come. Please, I'm asking as a mother, my son's quality of life was detrimented last year by untrained behavior specialists, untrained staff. I am a hairdresser and I know more about behavior therapy and the treatment of autism. Please let me be part of this change because my son went from a 10% quality of life to an 80% quality of life. He's doing things I never dreamt he would do. Please let's do this for the other kids that don't have a mom with a big problem like me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Next speaker, please. Tara Jenner, um, looking at your teacher certification general knowledge exam, I found it very interesting that you were concerned about teachers having access to where they struggled on those tests, yet over time we've never had any mention whatsoever about making sure that students and teachers have similar access to where they've fallen short on other standardized tests. How are they supposed to know where they're supposed to improve their education? And how are the teachers supposed to know where they might need to modify their teaching approach because a number of students also are seeing problems in that area and it may be a lack of ability for them to um, spend enough time in that particular topic or the way that they're presenting it may not be effective. So I just call that to your attention. Um, I'm gonna also um, just restate what Denise said. Um, some of the language that was mentioned in the comprehensive health section, specifically family life and some of the other questions, um, caused me to have some concern about what the content and topic would be there, um, especially if it deals with CRT, other morality issues and so forth. And I encourage you very strongly to consider opting in by families with specific details as to the content of that material at a bare minimum, opting out. Um, as I read it, and I might be wrong on this, um, I did the math, so we'll see how it goes. It looks like the individual teachers that would be teaching these classes would be getting $72,400 a year, approximately. That seems a lot higher than the average teacher salary. I'm just kind of curious as to the rationale behind that is because we are maybe bringing in people with outside expertise in the healthcare field. I don't know, I just posed that as a question as to whether or not I'm missing something. Also, um, I would really appreciate it if you guys would maybe consider hearing us before you draw consensus on anything. So I'd like to momentarily address Ray and Associates. Um, the interview schedule has an overlap of the board interviews with the community forum interviews. Uh, this seems to cut into the community ability to be able to hear, and frankly, the board to be able to hear how the individuals interact with the various um, committee makeup members during that. And um, I'd also request that when you do it, you flip the tables the other way around so that the audience, whether it's in person or on camera, can see the face of the interviewees. You did it the other way around during both the Ray and Associates interview as well as the interim superintendent interview. Um, union interviews um, are an extra and you're double dipping. Teachers are not all represented by the unions. And in fact, they have their own agenda, so I recommend that you eliminate them entirely from this process. Thank you. Good morning, Christine DiVigili here. Um, I just have, I have a couple of things. 
First, in regards to the exceptional student education bill, I think that needs to be moved up in your priority list. I would love to echo what our friend over here said about that. I mean, I, I've spent over 15 plus hours in um, advocating for families and advocating for kids to just get the services that they need, but they couldn't because they were outside of that age, that uh, at that age of accountability or whatever there. So I definitely think that increasing the age to, th to nine years is wonderful and it should be moved up on your priority list. Um, about the comprehensive health, same thing. I noticed that family life. I would like a little bit cl clarification there. Um, if you're gonna leave that in there, what does that mean? Uh, the next one was, oh, I thought it was kind of a bummer that transportation wasn't really talked about and that the reason for it was that it's just a volatile situation, so it comes up every year. We talk about it every year, but it doesn't go forward because it's a volatile situation. I mean, maybe we need to talk about why it's a volatile conversation and how we can make that better. I mean, it seems like an opportunity for some interest-based bargaining there, perhaps. My last one was, um, I'm, I'm gonna echo Tara there with the Talc and Spalk being involved in the uh, superintendent search process. I don't know why we're involving the unions in this. I mean, if you're gonna involve the unions in this, you should involve the, involve the public to have a seat at that exact same table. Um, and then the last one was, oh, that the, taking a consensus before allowing us to speak. Um, I mean, I guess that's your prerogative, but I just really hope that that behavior isn't repeated throughout the rest of the superintendent search process because that is going to prove to be quite troublesome. Um, other than that, I just wanna thank you guys for the few of you that did respond to my emails. Um, there'll be more on the way, so for those of you that have responded, thank you. I look forward to the rest of you in your responses. Corey Guy. Uh, first off, I want to say it is amazing to see your guys' beautiful faces. I just got to say that. Your smiles, your talking, more life. I, wanna, I, I just love seeing that. Um, I want to thank Dr. Savage. Uh, it's still great to see him and his efforts and really thank his staff and all the support they're throwing in um, as things aren't necessarily easier, but we're, we're trying to live a happier life doing it. Um, I don't support some of the fights, but your guys' legislative team there, that's five-star legislative team. I mean, they hit the ground, they run, they get stuff done, even the stuff that I wish or some more speed bumps in front of them. But uh, I want to congratulate them on their efforts and totally respect their, um, their task. I'm curious what safeguards the district is putting in on Ray and Associates to prevent them from using the FSBA, given that they've even pulled out. Um, I do not support, uh, let's see, the early meetings. Let's go forward, making sure families and the public can be involved at every step of the way. Um, the, the, the double meetings going on in different places that was touched on, uh, changing meeting location to, uh, I think that it needs to stay here. I know there's some talks about putting meetings in other spaces, uh, on school security. I would support the guardians over SROs, not in a negative, but it is a bad, is it a bad thing that a situation has to be upgraded in order to arrest a child? These are schools. Let's always remember that. Lastly, you guys keep using, oh, I left my, my phone down there. You guys keep using the word force multiplier. That literally is a term used in combat. That is not a general, like, uh, social policy and you guys used it. Unfortunately, uh, Chief Nolan used the word force multiplier. We're talking about kids. We literally used that word in two deployments, Kosovo and Afghanistan. That's the term we use, force multiplier. And we're talking about children. Um, the system, I, I believe a, a better system would be a top-down structure with SROs at the very top in districts, more or less, so they still um, have those things and they're over. I'm gonna try to jump. Uh, I echo the comprehensive health. Anything, any of those words that end in health, you guys don't have the authority to talk about. Uh, lastly, I'm gonna skip everything to give you guys 100% uh, tons of credit. 
the ESC. I just want to say as a father, we support you guys in your efforts and anything our groups or organizations can do to help you. We are here. Remember, district, you're a $2 billion district and you boast on it. So do something for them. Okay. So thank, thank you. Um, speakers were running really late, but I do, do want to touch on a couple things very, very quickly. Um, I th all of us agree about the expansion of the um, developmentally delayed. Um, however, remember, this is an ask. It's your legislature and the people that you elected to Tallahassee that have to do that. Uh, we are in favor of it. And you heard the rationale for that. It's out of our hands now and in the hands of our advocacy. And I think all of us would like to see that happen. Um, also, regarding the, the tests and, and that sort of thing, you have to keep in mind that any testing group, um, they, they are the ones that control what happens to their tests after a test is, is given. I'm very familiar with the college board because I taught courses for years with the college board. And the college board, the kids always, with the PSATs, the SATs, and I'm going to guess also with the higher level tests, that they get to see um, the problems. They, the tests are released. The fact that um, the teacher tests are not being released, and again, you know, we hear about it, but <laughs> this isn't a decision we as a board are, are making. You've heard us all be very concerned with teachers who are um, great in the classroom and yet for whatever reason um, miss by only a couple points perhaps passing um, tests. I'm not sure what's on the test but I can tell you right now I taught for 38 years and if you asked me to do um, basic algebra I'd be failing that that section. And uh, the other thing is um, two things. The Ray and Associates, keep in mind, sample. Those were samples that you have seen. Um, we as a board personalize and we will make, we've heard what you say, we know the community wants to participate and um, Again, they're samples, they're, they're not um, etched in stone. We will make those decisions. And finally, a couple of the speakers mentioned um, they had a problem with the terms, um, I think, family life, something like that in, um, in the health. I want to also remind you that it is in, in this district, any parent, that has a problem with certain, um, <clears throat> excuse me, ish, um, certain units in our comprehensive health, there is the option to opt out. And we, you know, um, I'll be honest, we're gonna make decisions for the, what we feel is best for most of our students. You make the decisions having to do with your own children and again, if you want it to opt out, you can opt out of that without depriving others who may want to hear that, whose parents, the children may want to hear that. Um, so that's all I have to say. Um, Ms. Morgan, do you have any um, comments? No. no okay, Ms. Skittens. Just very briefly, um, and I didn't get your last name, Kate, Okay, thank you. I just want to say thank you so much. And, and um, uh, you said it took you all these years to be able to stand there and do that, and, and you are fulfilling your purpose. And thank you so much for your statement. Um, on uh, Ms. Jenner, when you mentioned about the testing and you talked about 
uh, students being able to know what they missed. And I do know as a teacher that that is done quite a bit. That that's what the pre-testing, like FSA pre-testing and all that, is to find out where are the shortcomings and where are the weaknesses, and then they're able to even pinpoint it right down to that standard to be able to make uh, improvements in that area. And my, my thought on the t testing for the teachers is the same thing. And I do want to make one statement on that. Some people, when, when I first brought that up, we're saying we don't want teachers that are not capable or able of passing a test, and that is totally not what we're talking about. I just want to put that out in the atmosphere that it has, in many instances, it has nothing to do with your ability to teach, which is why teachers that have taught for three to four years and have highly, you know, qualified and highly effect effective uh, have proven they know how to teach and they know how to teach their subject. So that is why we're advocating for them to be able to, you know, to do that. I, I just wanted to mention that. Um, I have some other stuff I'll just mention it this afternoon. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Mrs. Jordan. Uh, Thank you. Uh, the only thing I have to say is that it was really exciting this morning to greet all the new teachers, the 368 new teachers that came through the lines from all over the United States. It was exciting to be out there with them. So I, I believe we're on to a great start for the school year. And um, Ms. Owens, I definitely would like to speak with you on that because I, I understand because of my grandson. So, yes. Okay. Ms. Fisher. Yeah, I have no comments right now. I'll save mine for later. Okay, Ms. Patrika. You saw uh, Yes, I don't have uh, comments. I'll save them for probably tomorrow afternoon's briefing. But I do have a question that I'd like to direct to the board attorney, to the vice chair, if I may. Go ahead. So I'm uh, just sort of giving some notice as to this is these are the questions that I would like to have answered before tomorrow night's meeting with regard to the attorney's recommendation on the agenda. I'm not clear on um, compliance with policy 1.15 paragraph 3. Paragraph 3 indicates that um, the school board shall provide legal services for a school board member who is sued. And the issue we're dealing with here was not a lawsuit. Instead, it was a complaint. So in order to be in specific compliance with our policy, I wonder whether we need to vote to override that policy tomorrow night before we vote on this. Alternatively, um, I'd like the board to consider what this means for the entire district. For example, if we have an employee who is accused of wrongdoing, are we putting ourselves in a situation where we have set a precedent that we will pay for that employee's legal fees going forward? So please don't take this to be an objection to the underlying recommendation here. I just have concerns about our ability to follow the law. I read the cases. I understand what the law says, but I think the law is not in compliance with our policy or vice versa. Our policy is not in compliance with the law. Do we need to address that going forward? Do we need to address that tomorrow night? And what message does this send to our employees? I don't need those answers right now. Um, if I could just have those answers before we take the vote tomorrow night, I would really appreciate that. Those are my comments for today. Thank you. This afternoon. So I think that might be something that you would bring up during agenda review. Um, You're absolutely right. My bad. Yeah. Yes, you are. No, <laughs> kidding. All right. So. Um, Attorney Dupree Bruno, do you have comments? Uh, I, 
I don't have any general comments, but I will address um, Board Member Patrika's concerns during the agenda review. Uh, okay, and since we only have uh, let a little over 15 minutes before the next meeting, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and um, adjourn for now. And if you have any questions on any of this, um, we'll go ahead and address it this afternoon. Please make one last uh, comment. Well, we are so. We are so far over, we're going to adjourn. Thank you, everybody.